In this SimScale tutorial, let's have a look at simulating the thermal comfort in an office space. As always, we first need to upload our geometry. You can either import native CAD formats or use the direct link with Onshape. So here's our office space geometry. What we can do is hide the window and have a look inside where we can see that we've got two makeshift bodies and also computer equipment. We can now create our simulation. For this case, we'll create a convective heat transfer simulation as we are simulating a single fluid region. First, we need to establish the simulation settings. We're enabling radiation for this simulation and using the K-Omega SST turbulence model. Focusing now on the mesh, we're going to employ the automatic meshing algorithm and set some specific refinements. So I'd like to set a maximum cell size on the whole domain of 0.05 meters. And I do this using a region refinement. We also need to ensure that we have boundary layer refinement on all of the fluid surfaces other than the openings. So here I'm deselecting the inlets and outlets. I would also like to add specific refinement to all the features of the geometry. So I'm going to apply refinement of 0.01 meters onto all of the features in the model. Now I simply generate the mesh. Whilst it's generating, I can set up the rest of the simulation. Under model, I need to define the direction of gravity, which is acting in the negative y direction. For this simulation, I am applying the default air material to the full domain. To help stabilize the simulation, I'm applying an initial temperature condition equal to the temperature supplied at the inlets. For boundary conditions, I start by applying velocity to the inlets of magnitude 3 meters per second and also applying the temperature that we defined as the initial condition. For the outlets, I'm applying atmospheric pressure and this is equal to zero gauge pressure and I'm using a mean value to help stabilize the simulation. On the window, we need to apply a convective heat transfer condition. We need to give the external temperature, the ambient temperature, and also a heat transfer coefficient. Similarly, for the outside wall, I also give the external temperature plus a heat transfer coefficient. On the internal walls, I use the internal temperature of neighboring rooms plus a heat transfer coefficient. To input the heat generation into the system, I'm again going to use wall conditions applied to the humans and to the PC units. So what I use is a turbulent heat flux on the humans and give the heat flux value of 100 watts per meter squared equivalent to the metabolic rate of the humans. I repeat this process for the PC units, adding a slightly higher heat flux. In order to select the back of the PC units, I need to spin the entire model and hide the back surface. With the boundary conditions in place, I can now apply simulation control. Here is where I can select the number of iterations for the simulation and also make use of the number of processes available for the run. Once the meshing process is complete, we can inspect the mesh and check whether the boundary layer refinements have been generated. Taking a look inside, we can also see whether the mesh accurately represents the complete geometry. Now comes the time to start the simulation. You'll get a warning message, but this can be ignored as we want to use the default boundary conditions anyway. We can name the run 
and then hit start. You can check the progress of the simulation using the convergence plot underneath the run. With the simulation complete, we can post-process the results. We can visualize the temperature on the surfaces. And using a ISO volume, we can see the areas of high temperature in the room. Finally, using particle traces, we can get a good understanding of the flow patterns in the domain. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. You can find a link in the description below to this tutorial project so that you can have a go for yourselves.